I really believe one of the greatest enemies that could attack our life is the spirit of over familiarity. Because here's what I understand. When familiarity walks in, honor and appreciation walks out. And I want to talk to you about the spirit of familiarity because I really believe it is hitting a lot of people's lives and it could ultimately affect our lives if we are not careful. So I want to talk to you about that today and it's called The Problem with Familiarity. And I want to dive in in the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 54 through 58. Because I really believe it's going to give us context to really talk about the problem with familiarity. So it reads like this. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, Where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Then they scoffed. Psh, he's just the carpenter's son. And we know Mary and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live here right here among us, where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he only did a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Incredible. You know, in this text, we read that Jesus returns to Nazareth. He goes back to his hometown and Jesus does what he usually always does. And Jesus goes to the synagogue and he starts preaching. And right there, he's teaching, giving them wisdom and giving them revelation. And not only that, Jesus is right here back in his hometown and he has the power to do miracles. And as he's over here, teaching the people in his own hometown is looking at him and saying where did he get all this wisdom from where did he learn all this and not only that isn't this the carpenter's son isn't this mary's boy like like his sisters live among us where did jesus learn all this wisdom from because this isn't the person that we know. This isn't the person that we've seen in the streets because he's just the carpenter's son. Isn't it funny though right there, y'all, that some people in your life can't accept the new you because they still see you as the past version or the old you? Have that ever happened to you? Maybe, you know, you struggle with alcohol and you defeated alcohol, but because they know you from having an alcohol addiction, what do they call you? Oh, Here comes the alcoholic, but bro, I've been freed from like eight years from that. What are you talking about? Or maybe in my case, let me tell you something. When it comes to my wife, you guys know that my wife was in the adult film industry for seven years of her life. I had people messaging me and tell me, Rich, did you know that your wife was in the adult film industry? I'm like, yeah, bro. She got out of that like 12 years ago. She's a new creation, a new person, and her name is Brittany. Her name is not her stage name. You know, there's certain people in your life that no matter how much you change, they cannot accept the new you. And you know what I believe the reason why they cannot do that is some people cannot see the change in you because they don't take the responsibility and the ownership that they have never changed themselves. So since they haven't changed themselves, they try to reduce you to the old you so they don't have to be stuck in regret and offense because they have never changed themselves. Because to be honest with you, the only people who get offended that you have changed are the people who never have matured and changed in their own life. And that was the issue with the people in their own, in Jesus's own hometown. They couldn't see Jesus as the savior. They couldn't see Jesus in, in what he has done and how he has grown and how he has matured. They couldn't see Jesus for who he was today. And because of this, it hindered what Jesus could have done in their life. And this brings me to the first point. When you battle with familiarity, it hinders the hand of God. You see, we notice that when Jesus goes in his hometown, Jesus cannot do many miracles. You know why? It's because of their unbelief. Here Jesus is, y'all, in their midst. Jesus is right here. He can give them wisdom. 
about their day. He can give them revelation. He can help them in their everyday life. Jesus even has the power to do miracles. If you are sick, Jesus can heal you. If you need help, you know, with your mind, maybe you're battling with anxiety, depression, Jesus can heal you. But instead, they allow their familiarity to hinder what could Jesus do in their lives. And I believe if we're not careful, we can hinder Jesus as well when it comes to our lives. We can just see Jesus when we wake up as, oh, you know, I'm just going to pray to God today. You know, I'm just going to say my prayer. I'm going to go to work today. I'm going to read my Bible. And yeah, you know, I'm going to check in you know, and check out and go about my day. If we're not careful, we can lose the awe. We can lose the fact that Jesus could show up and show out in our lives. You know, the Bible teaches that God wants to take us from glory to glory. And too often, if we're not careful, we can allow the spirit of familiarity to hinder what God wants to do in our lives. I think we need to be careful of always family because we could allow the spirit of familiarity to get the best of us. Where we're no longer waking up with enthusiasm, with zeal, with, with asking God, like, God, like, could you give me wisdom in my day, God, so I could kill it at my job, or I could be a better spouse, or I could be a better parent. You see, if we're not careful, we could hinder the hand of God. And not only that, we could hinder the people that are in our lives. How many times do we have it in our lives that we have access to great people in our lives? Maybe it might be a certain family member. Maybe it might be somebody at our job. Maybe it might be our pastor. Maybe it might be our leader. We have access to these people. But because the spirit of familiarity has hit our life, it is hindered now how we could withdraw from them. I believe that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to live a life of familiarity so we don't withdraw from people who's around us. You see, the enemy doesn't mind who you have around you as long as you don't understand who those people are in your life. There's some people in your life that you can get wisdom from when it comes to finances. There's people in your life who might be business owners and here you are wanting to start a business, but because the spirit of familiarity has gotten the best of you, you don't go and withdraw from those people. And here they are. God has given you access to them. But because you see them a certain way, oh, that's just a, a family member of mine. Oh, that's just my brother. Oh, that's just my sister. Oh, that's just my dad. Oh, that's just my uncle. You're hindering what they can do in your life because the spirit of familiarity. And I'm wondering here today, who have you allowed to become familiar that you stopped getting advice from? You see, I believe that that is the enemy. What does the Bible say in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your perception of how you see people. So you never withdraw from them. And I believe here today, if we want to see God move mightily in our lives, then we need God to give us a better clarity of who he is and the people around us. Because if not... The people that God has placed in your life, you'll never be able to withdraw from them and get the revelation that you need for your today. Because that was the issue with the people in Jesus' hometown. They couldn't see Jesus correctly. And because they couldn't see Jesus correctly, it hindered how the Lord could have deposited him into their lives because of how they saw him. And I really believe here today that God wants us to break free from that. He wants us to break free from how we see people around us so we can withdraw from the people that he has placed in our everyday life. The second thing I notice is that when we operate in a spirit of familiarity, the second thing that it does is that it stops us from living a thankful life. You see, when we stop being thankful, that's when familiarity starts to creep into our lives. And the greatest antidote to break free from the spirit of familiarity is when we start to become thankful and we start to become appreciative. You see, how many times in our lives do we could take for granted the people in our lives? You know the friend that's always there for you? That whenever you're going through hardships, whenever you're going through struggles, and when you reach out to that person, that person is always there for you. And sometimes in our lives, it's the people that are closest in our lives that we can take for granted. We could even take for granted our spouse. You know, whenever you see 
you know, your spouse going to work. Maybe it's, it's your husband. He's out there providing and paying the bills for you, working hard, and you see him coming home, and it's like, oh, there's my husband. You could easily take him for granted, but never realizing all that he does for you. Or maybe it's your wife seeing how she takes care of the kids, how she always has a cooked meal, how she's always there to love on you, how she's always there to, to be there for you. You could take that for granted if you're not careful. And you know what happens when we take people for granted is that we'll eventually lose what we don't value. And how many times have we seen that in our, in, in our lives and other people's lives where we lose what we don't value? You know, maybe you're getting mad because you got to go to work every day and you're like, man, I got to go to work and go to this job. But isn't it interesting how in one moment of your life you prayed earnestly and so hard for that job? God, please bring me a job. God, please, God, provide for me. God, I, I need a job, Lord. I need a job. Help me, God, when it comes to this resume that it, that it would come back to me and I'll be able to get this job. And boom, God works a miracle in your life. And now... That miracle in your life is something that has become common and familiar for you. But you forgot at one moment that that prayer that God answered was a miracle. And now it just became familiar. How did that all happen? It's because you stopped living with the sense of thankfulness. And I'm telling you, if we want to see God move in our lives, if we want to see you know, people who who radically make a difference in our lives, stay in our lives, then we need to have a spirit of thankfulness. So I want to encourage you here today. Who is in your life that you need to reach out to and say thank you? Is it your spouse? Is it your friend? You know, is it uh, somebody at your job? Because I'm telling you, good people are hard to find nowadays. And especially when it comes to God. You know, every morning I make sure to tell God thank you. And before I ask him, you know, my prayer request, I sit there and I tell God, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, God, for waking me up. Thank you, God, for my health. Thank you, God, for my wife. Thank you, God, for my daughters. Thank you, God, for giving me a place to live. You see, I never want to get familiar with God's blessings. I never want to get so familiar with God that I lose the awe and the appreciation of Him. And friends, that's where I want to encourage you to hear today. Don't get familiar, y'all, with the people in your life. Don't get familiar with God. Don't get familiar with your spouse. Don't get familiar with your pastor and leader. Begin to be thankful and appreciative of those who are around you because when you do that, you break off the spirit of familiarity. The third thing, what happens when we get too familiar, and this is my closing point, is that we start to drop our guard. And I want to flip it on you guys on a whole different passage. And this is Judges 16, verse 19 through 20. And I have preached on this passage so much, but I have never caught the revelation and the perspective from this point. And I want to read this to you. It says this, Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head in her lap, and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. And this way, she began to bring him down, and his, strength, and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. You see, you know what happens when we start to get familiar with God? We start to drop our guard. And anytime you start to drop your guard, you stop protecting your heart. And this is what Hapson happened with Samson. He got too familiar with the grace of God. Here he is messing around with Delilah and hanging out with her and here she is trying to figure out her strength and it's not one time or two times no it's three times where she's trying to figure out where his strength lies and she doesn't get it because samson doesn't open up to her but here's samson flirting with her messing around putting himself in a position that he should not be in and then eventually after this woman nags samson he finally goes and tells her where his secret lies so what does Delilah do? She goes, shaves off his head, and here's Samson thinking, oh, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to shake myself free. I'm going to go and beat up on these Philistines. But as he's going and he's trying to shake himself free, he didn't realize that the Lord had left him. His anointing left his life. 
How did this all happen, friends? It's because he got way too familiar. He thought, oh, God's going to grace me in this situation. I could dabble with her. I could flirt with her. I could dabble in sin, and it's okay. God's going to be there. God's going to help me. God's going to still anoint me. But the Bible says that God didn't anoint him. It said that God left Samson. He left Samson because he got too familiar with the presence of God. He thought that he could always use the grace card and the grace card would help him out of this situation. But how many of you guys know that grace doesn't empower us to keep on sinning. Grace actually empowers us so we can stop sinning. And I want to tell you here today, don't get too familiar when it comes to sin. Don't get too familiar when it comes to temptation. Don't get too familiar where you stop and you drop your guard. You see, because sooner or later, my friends, that temptation, that sin will eventually catch up to you. And we serve a good God, a graceful God who wants to give you grace, who wants to help you. He is so graceful. And he's telling us, hey, don't get so familiar with me that you eventually drop your guard. You know, I, I um, stumbled upon a YouTube video and the YouTube video was talking about this tiger attack that happened with Siegfried and Roy. And if you don't know who Siegfried and Roy is, Siegfried and Roy, they did this act, they do these acts in, in Las Vegas. I do believe both of them have passed away. But one of the things that they would do in their act is that they would get tigers in their act and They've been known to deal with tigers for years. Well, anyways, long story short, they're in Vegas. You know, they're doing a show, and the tigers come out, and out of nowhere, one of the tigers attacks Roy, gets him, I believe, by his neck, and drags him off stage. And here's Roy in panic, right? Because this grown tiger, you know, is attacking him, and this grown tiger could kill him. Luckily, the tiger did not kill him, but they did an interview with Roy like 10 years later after, after that incident, and they said, Roy, what did you learn from this incident? And they said, you know what? I've been a professional for years, but the one thing that I did that I wish I would have never done is I wish I would have never taken the tiger for granted. And I wish I would have never dropped my guard. You see, if we're not careful, we too could drop our guard. We can take the presence of God for granted. We can find ourselves dabbling in things that we should not be doing. We could even take our spouse for granted. Oh, it's just my wife. Oh, it's just my husband. Oh, it's just my job. Oh, it's just my friend. No, 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 no. The things that you take for granted could be the very thing that you lose in your life. Samson lost his anointing because he got too familiar. And I want to urge you here today, Love Always community, don't take the presence of God for granted. Do not allow the spirit of familiarity to hit your life. Keep your guard up. Keep your eyes fresh. Have your mouth speak words of thankfulness and gratitude so the spirit of familiarity never hits your life. Because if you're not careful, that is a way that the enemy could come and attack your life because you got way too familiar. And how many of you guys know that old saying that goes, man, you don't know what you got until it's gone. Can I tell you that it's a whole lot harder to win somebody back after you have broken trust with them. It's a whole lot harder to win that job back after you have taken it for granted. It is a whole lot harder, guys, to build that trust up with God if you take that for granted. See, Samson did take God for granted, but later on, he, his hair grew back and he was redeemed. But here's what I want to tell you here today. You don't have to lose everything in your life for you to be appreciative. Why don't you be appreciative today? Why don't you have a spirit of thankfulness hit your life today? Why don't you guard your heart today? In doing so, friends, we can live out the plans and the purposes that God has in our life, and we can learn to grow our marriage. We could grow the fire in our, in our relationship. We can grow the fire with God. And not only that, we can see God move mightily in and through our lives. Let us not 
uh, uh, allow our lives to be like the people in Jesus' in his own hometown. Instead, let us be grateful people who are in awe of his presence. And when we live that type of life, friends, we can we are going to see God take us from glory to glory and do miraculous things in and through our lives. 